Welcome back. In this set of video lectures, I'm going to introduce you all to the main topic of the course, which is arguments. So we talked in the last set of video lectures about justification, and there's a connection between justification and arguments, which is very important. Justification for a belief or a claim can be expressed as what we'll define as an argument. Um, so the definition of an argument is given here on this slide. Um, there are slight variations sometimes in, in how this idea is articulated, but this is actually a uh, relatively precise definition as far as definitions go, and it is, um, it's this definition that is widely used within um, the field of critical thinking, logic, philosophy. Uh, this is a sense, a meaning of the word argument that is fairly precise and technical, um, but is, uh, is, is very important and actually applies to quite a lot of what we do when we speak and when we think. So the definition here is a set of claims where some of the claims are intended as support for others of the claims. And the supporting claims in this set will be called premises and the supported claims will be called conclusions. The basic idea here is that an argument is a set of claims where some are supposed to support others. Some are supposed to provide justification for others. Now, in this definition, I've just used the word claims. Um, I've, I've basically defined argument, uh, arguments in terms of claims, but the same, uh, the same definition would apply to beliefs. So here I've qualified the argument slightly to say claims or beliefs. Um, when there's a set of beliefs where some of the beliefs are intended to justify others of the beliefs, then one also has an argument in this sense. Uh, just for the sake of, of ease of discussing arguments, I will mostly just refer to claims. But when I do that, you should, you should understand that um, when I do refer to claims and relations of justification between claims with arguments, you should understand that the same thing would apply to beliefs and relations between beliefs. Remember that claims um, express possible beliefs, right? Claims are declarative sentences that state some possible belief that someone could have, like the statement, there are bears in Yellowstone Park, or the statement, there are no bears in Yellowstone Park. Both of those statements express possible beliefs. They're both claims, right? Um, and so um, since a claim is defined as something that can express a possible belief, the relations between claims that are articulated in explicitly made arguments, stated arguments, or um, re or arguments that you would read on a you know on a page somewhere on a website or in a book those uh, arguments that are expressed in language um, have an analog or a parallel in arguments that are expressed in someone's thinking um, sometimes when we talk about the arguments expressed in someone's thinking we use the term inferences or process of reasoning um, but uh, it's really the same the same basic relationship that we're interested in, which is relations of justification between beliefs or claims. Now, another thing to note is that we don't mean the word argument um, in a very common sense that it's used sometimes in the language, which is sometimes people um, talk about an argument or arguments in terms of a disagreement or debate. That is, when they use the word argument, they mean a disagreement or a, or a debate or a fight. So saying, for instance, um, I had an argument, my, my, my boyfriend or girlfriend and I had a long argument um, late into the night last night. That is using the, uh, the word argument in a different sense than the one that we are interested in here. The sense that we're using is, again, just as defined on the previous slides, a set of claims where some are intended as justifications for others. So here's an example of an argument. UNLV should offer free parking to all students. Students pay enough for their tuition already and to require them to pay for parking is insulting. So you can imagine seeing this posted on a message board somewhere or in an email, or you might just imagine hearing one of your friends say something like that. Uh, but wherever you find this 
passage, what I'm going to call a passage, it's just a chunk of text, a chunk of statements, okay? Wherever you find this passage, um, it's pretty clear that it expresses an argument because some of the claims in this passage are intended as support for others of the claims. And so we want to look at that a little bit more closely now. Okay, so if we look at this more closely, um, we're going to treat this passage as an argument. We're, just, we're, we're saying there's an argument there. That means that some of the claims are intended as justifications for the others. So um, which are the claims that are justifying and which are the claims that are justified? That's the question we want to ask. What are the claims that are supporting other claims and what are the claims that are supported by other claims? I think the easiest reading of this passage is that the supporting claims are two. One is that students pay enough for their tuition, and the other is that to require students to pay for parking is insulting. And those two claims um, together uh, are supporting the claim that UNLV should offer free parking to all students. So in this case, those first two that are listed as supporting claim, those are the premises and the support, support TED claim that UNLV should offer free parking to all students is the conclusion of the argument. And so here's the same thing with the premises and conclusion marked in that way. Now, I don't wanna confuse things. We're just getting started with this process, but I want to just as an aside mention that there is probably another way to read this passage, which involves um, two conclusions, an intermediate conclusion and a main conclusion. And the way to think about that is that you could say, uh, and again, it, it's it's a something of a matter of interpretation how the argument in a passage is read or how a passage is read as expressing an argument. But um, you could read this passage as saying that there's um, an initial premise that students pay enough for their tuition already. And then there's a conclusion drawn in part from that premise. That is that there that another of the claims is being partly supported by that first premise, uh, which I'm here labeling an intermediate conclusion. This would be that um, to require students to pay for parking is insulting. So if you think how much students are paying already is a reason to think that asking them to pay is insulting and that that's part of what's being stated here in this argument, then um, that second claim could be treated as itself a conclusion as well. Notice that um, even so, that second claim is in turn functioning as a premise to support the main conclusion. And that's what makes it count as an intermediate rather than a main conclusion. So interestingly, that middle um, sentence there is actually serving both as a, um, both as a conclusion of another uh, premise there, of another claim, and it's serving as a premise in support of the conclusion. Okay, so sometimes the same claim will serve both as a premise um, and as a conclusion. And so uh, that's what's captured here in this alternative answer to the question of what is the argument in this passage. If that's confusing to you, just ignore it for now. We're going to come back to it uh, soon.